Well, hello, friends. Greetings from the beautiful North Shore. Uh, when, I, when I speak, everybody always tells me they got married on the North Shore, they honeymooned on the North Shore, or of course, if they didn't do those things, they've been to Betty's Pies. So um, if you haven't done that, you might have your head in the sand and it's time to go up to the North Shore. Um, but I'm here to talk to you about something that's uh, really near and dear to my heart. Um, we in Minnesota are really faced with a significant problem. Uh, it impacts me, it impacts every single one of us sitting here today. And so I wanna share a little bit about that and hopefully uh, just share some hope and I think what we can do to kind of take on that problem and solve it. Um, we had in Minnesota, I think over the last year, as we can say, probably one of the toughest years that we've ever faced. Um, but as I look out, not just at that, as I look out some other things that are happening, I'm very, very concerned. Uh, the problem I see, and many others that our mayors have talked with me about and so on, is really that Minnesota continues in many areas to decline nationally. Uh, and what I mean by that is as you start looking around at statistics, and for me where it's really, really important is looking at statistics around innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, as you know, we have, or maybe you don't know, we have a, a, a kind of a common bond uh, in Two Harbors uh, with down here. And that common bond is this little company called 3M. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but 3M started in Two Harbors, so that's a, our claim to fame. Sadly, they left. The story might have been very different in our community. Um, but the, the issue is simply that innovation and entrepreneurship used to be deeply, deeply embedded into everything that we did. Many, many corporate companies in, Amer or in Minnesota today are byproducts of innovative ideas and entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs getting together and saying, how do we solve a problem that we have? And so as I look at this problem and I ask myself kind of what's the root root issue, and I, I talk with my staff and the administration about this a lot, as well as team members and the businesses, I always say, what's the root issue? And what I see a root issue of is simply that our culture in Minnesota has lost its way. Our culture was one that used to be proud of the fact that it was 40 below and cold and we had the best workers in America, do you remember this? And we used to be proud of the fact that our education system was one of the top, if not the top. And you might say, wait a second, we still talk about some of those things. But as we look out as mayors, there's a significant concern because the shift has seemed, uh, seemed to happen where uh, that's not as celebrated as it once was. Okay, so I think we understand the problem. Um, hopefully today I'll give you a message of hope. Now, Two Harbors, this little town on the North Shore, about 4,000 people if you count the cats and dogs. Um, I was on the city council for many years there. And I can tell you, if you wanted to take a place that was broken in terms of its culture, if you wanted to take a place that didn't celebrate business, if you wanted to take a place that operated immensely on fear, um, it was Two Harbors. People would come to our community, and this is what they say, and this is how I know that to be true. They would say, gosh, this is a diamond in the rough. There's a lot of opportunity here. I, what's wrong? <laughs> and the question would always be asked, what's wrong? And so I got involved in the city council, got elected when I was 25 years old. And I was so passionate, so driven, because I wanted this community to do well, and I wanted to see change happen. I wanted to see the community become vibrant. And what I found when I did that is that <clears throat> the culture really wasn't ready for that, excuse me. And so I did that for about nine, 10 years, and after a while, there were so many battles and so many things that I just said, okay, enough, I, I can't do this. My businesses were taking off. Um, and, and I was like, okay, I don't have the time or the energy to focus on changing this culture in Two Harbors. And so, I went and, st you know, not started actually, I did start a couple of businesses, but I went back to the businesses and, and focused my time. And about four years later, some elders in the community came to me and said, Chris, we really think you should run for mayor. And I said, well, why? I did that gig before, and Terry probably understands all too well. 
how much fun it is being a mayor at times. But I said, I don't know if I want to do that. It's, that's, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of pain. And these folks said to me, listen, we think we're ready as a community. We think we're ready to start making some significant changes culturally. And the question was, OK, well, what do you mean by that? Or, or why do you think that's the case? And the answer was is that many of the folks there had started paying attention to what was going on in the entrepreneur world and in the innovation world in our community. And they were saying, Chris, you started like four or five businesses in this community. And we've noticed that there's different people. And this isn't about me, just so you know, but there's a lot of different people now that are new in our community that came here because they had the opportunity to get a job working for a digital marketing company. Uh, by the way, our digital marketing company does work uh, nationally and throughout Canada. Uh, we support large franchises is what we do for digital marketing at a local level. So anyways, they, they shared with me how they'd seen this positive change with new people moving into the community, things happening, and they wanted me to run. And after a lot of thought and frankly a lot of prayer, I said, okay, I'll do that. And so I listened to the community. I went around and you, know, you do the classic thing you do as a mayor. You hear people, you listen. And what we heard consistently was three things. Number one, our town is really old. It's really broken. The infrastructure is broken. The roads are broken. And I'm telling you guys, if you've ever been on the North Shore and actually driven into the towns, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, these roads down here, people complain about them. I'm like, these things are beautiful. <laughs> and maybe you have some roads like that out in the outskirts. I don't know. But, but the point is, is that it was broken. And the second thing they said is, hey, can you please work on getting City Hall to feel like it's part of the community? The thing that had started to happen is City Hall had kind of become its island. And it was kind of like people would get elected and they would get sucked into this island and people would not get responses. They'd call in about something that was broken and they wouldn't hear back and on and on. And so the question was, can we make that a little more responsive? And then the third thing they said is, can you go and create more jobs? And of course, I was like, yeah, hey, we can do those things. That's not hard. Um, that's not hard, famous last words. Um, again, I go back to that cultural thing and how it's a big, big issue uh, when you're not celebrating innovation. Anyways, what happened as I got elected is those first couple things started to really pan out. We have a new city administrator. The council was amazing, and we started spending significant dollars on infrastructure, roads, sewer, water, and replacing things. We had the state of Minnesota step up, the legislature stepped up and gave us some big bonding dollars. They gave us a half a percent sales tax so we could do these things. But the, the biggest thing, um, actually there was a work order system that got put in place and all this stuff, and so we started those, those first two things really, we started having a lot of success, and we were excited. And two years into my term, somebody reminded me, what about the job thing? We need to create jobs and we need to have innovation. And so I was like, okay, no problem, I'll go take a look at that. So I got together with four different entrepreneurs in the community, very young, a couple of them had just finished college, a couple of them were just finishing college. We sat down and we decided to come up with a business. And we were very intentional that this wasn't gonna be a nonprofit, it was gonna be a business. And we said, wouldn't it be fun, like many businesses, to call it, where they start, call it the garage, because there's so many businesses that have started in garages. Right? So unbeknownst to us, the first day we leased a space, we walked into the space, and up on the wall there in Two Harbors was a big picture, and literally it said garage on it, and we found out that the space that we were leasing had been an old auto mechanic uh, repair garage um, where they had sold vehicles as well. So it was kind of cool. We thought, well, that's a sign, you know? This is great. Well, what happened then is basically um, we realized the garage wasn't going to work as a name, and so we renamed it Garage Starts. And what we decided that was so important in Two Harbors and in the community was that we had to change the culture around, again, innovation and entrepreneurship. And the way that we were going to do that is to just reach out to anybody that was interested in starting a business or anybody that maybe already had a business. And we thought, well, you know, like many businesses I've started, you know, you might get like one or two people that show up and it slowly, you 
work really hard and it grows. And oh man, we were not prepared for the amount of businesses that came to us and said, <clears throat> it is lonely, it is hard, it is overwhelming, it is extremely difficult to get capital, and all these different things that businesses struggle with. And so we were like, wow, because we had so many people coming to us to do business, and we, and we couldn't keep up. The upshot of that story is, as we started working through Garage Starts, we've watched now that there's been significant impact. The irony of it is, as we started sharing this with the community, what we were doing, we had to go to City Hall because City Hall had some economic development money and so on and so forth. And the irony of it is the only entity that fought us was the city <laughs> while I was the mayor. Isn't that interesting? And that's why I'm here to share my heart today about you know, opening ourselves up to being back in, in significance when it comes to the culture of Minnesota innovation. Now you might say, Chris, that's just two harbors. But the truth is, is that Minnesota now is trying to make this big push. There's Launch Minnesota and all these different things to get people back into innovation. And even during the pandemic, there was a lot of people that started businesses. And people say, it's great, the statistics look healthy, they look wonderful. But they fail to mention that this was less than what we've had in other downturns, like 08 and other times. And so it's a significant problem. But what I'm here to share with you is a message of hope. What I want you to think about right now is a Minnesota where entrepreneurs are celebrated, people who are coming up with new ideas and solving problems. To me, that's a Minnesota where all of us gathered right here today, this chamber meeting, are seeing new things happen. We're seeing the nation, instead of talking about our beautiful state in a negative tone, they're saying, Minnesota, that's the place where the innovators are. Right now, when you start talking about technology innovation, they say, oh, Silicon Valley or Austin, Texas, and when they look at the roots of all that, you know where it started? Here. And so we want to bring that back around because we see in Minnesota where the jobs abound, where we're working with young people to get them fired up about good old-fashioned hard work. How many of you are struggling trying to get employees today? And it goes on and on. We have a problem. It's significant. We need to focus on it. Because what I see is in Minnesota where all of us are celebrating those innovators and those ideas, and we can be proud of what we're doing. Okay? So what I'm going to ask you to think about as you leave here today is this. You can just head on out, and you're going to be like, well, that was a nice speech. Or you're going to be challenged to think, what can I do as I go back to my communities, as I go back to my business, as I go back to the cities? What can I do to help work towards this recreation and bringing that culture norm back? And there's a lot of things out there you can do, but the number one thing today that I want you to know that you can do is focus on talking about those issues the innovation issue. Go out and say, what can we do? Because once you start talking about it, the next thing that's going to happen is you're going to take action. And so, Garage Starts, I shared a little bit about that. If you want to know more, feel free to, to, uh, to talk to me. It's been very successful. In a small community of 4,000, we have many clients that are coming in and getting helped. Um, and again, you're always welcome on the North Shore. And I just want to thank you, Nathan and Holly and everybody, for having me here to talk. Um, hopefully I haven't taken too much time, um, so I appreciate it, everybody. Have a very, very wonderful day. Okay, so I'll just stay up here for just a second or two. Does anyone have any questions from the audience about <laughs> entrepreneurship, garage starts, or anything else? Mr. Burns. So as mayor, who would you pick, Judy's Cafe or Betty's for the best breakfast? <laughs> Rustic. <laughs> it, well, and that's an argument, too, because if Vanilla Bean was in the room, they'd want to be there. But uh, yeah, but I, 
personally, I am a, I'm a Judy's fan. I'll, I'll admit that. I love Judy's. They have a great breakfast, great pancakes. No, they're, they take American Express even now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Tony? <laughs> Tony, did you have? Sam? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, thank you for being here. I was curious if you could point out one or two strategies for a city and how you're going to attract the business or uh, do something with the entrepreneur spirit or you work with yep, other yep. government agencies or how you going about that? And so interesting. You know, one of the things that we struggle with in our community is for years, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars trying to recruit in that big business. And a lot of times they'd be going after businesses that maybe had 30 jobs, okay? Hundreds of thousands of dollars invested, 30 jobs. And in the course of two years, Garage starts working with entrepreneurs who are startups, or maybe they've already been in business, but they're expanding. We've created probably well over 50 jobs. Okay, And so it's not that I'm against working, but I think what more and more people are starting to understand is the economic development model that was maybe you know, years ago now is needing to shift um, to inward focus within your community. You know, looking to the entrepreneurs within your community and say, we want to support you. So, yep. You talked about the culture of the community. What exactly do you mean by that? <clears throat> well, that's a great question. So, Two Harbors was known for celebrating mediocrity. Um, and so just sharing what I mean by that about Two Harbors, and then maybe that'll put it into context for you in terms of culture. Every business, every organization, every community has a culture, whether you know it or not. If you pay attention to some cities are very much about you know, events and fun, and, and some cities aren't so much about that. Or some cities are serious about making sure their infrastructure is taken care of, and they're going to make sure their staff is very responsive to what's going on within the city if there's a broken sidewalk or something like that. And in Two Harbors, our struggle was, and you can still to this day walk our sidewalks, and they're still stamped 1906 on some of our sidewalks. And so the culture was like, ah, it's OK. It doesn't really matter. Um, so mediocrity was celebrated, if that makes sense. And what we're changing it to is being more hungry, humble, and smart. We talk about this a lot. And so hungry for us means driven. Like, take the extra step, do the extra thing, be driven towards the bigger, greater good for the community. Um, humble for us means don't focus on yourself and what you've accomplished, focus on others. Um, and smart means you just understand how to do your work and do your job. Um, so we talk a lot about that as our culture um, and attitude that we want to have within our community. Now that's just with the city itself, you know, the city, you know, being the, not necessarily the community, but what you find quite often is if the city makes those adjustments and starts talking about it and starts fixing things and starts really being focused on things, the community as well then jumps in and says, oh, we, you know, we should fix up our, our home or, or whatever it might be. So. Does that answer your question? Yep. Yeah, and so all of us represent organizations, big and small. If you were to walk into a, a conference that we were having among ourselves, how would you know that this is a group of entrepreneurs versus these are people that are not interested in entrepreneurship? Give us some indicators. Oh, well, the biggest indicator you'll find if, if you started asking questions is entrepreneurs are typically risk takers. Sometimes some people would say even unhealthy in terms of risk taking. Um, so you start asking questions, of course, you know, maybe watching people, you might not get as much of an, uh, of an understanding, but you're going to find out pretty quickly that entrepreneurs are willing to put money on something and spend a lot of time, energy, and effort trying to get something solved or fixed. Um, other folks, in terms of managing businesses, my experience has been, you know, they're more about, wow, what can we do to make sure that we're saving money, making sure our employees are taken care of, making sure things are a run well, you know, a more established type business. So, <laughs> was that the right answer? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Carrie. Oh, I'm just wondering what do you do, especially in a small community, to retain younger talent and keep them yeah. going something bigger? That is great, Carrie, because that was one of the big reasons when we started looking at jobs. You know, we talked about two arbors, of course, like a lot of rural places, the students leave. 
And so we started saying, is there an opportunity for us to capture their heart? And even if they leave, instead of it being a negative, because if you listen to kids sometimes, they're like, I am out of here as fast as I possibly get out of this town. So we try to capture their heart so they're excited about the community. And a lot of, we encourage them, go to school or whatever, but if you could come back, that would be tremendously beneficial. And so when we started Garage Starts, I told you about there was two college students. These are extremely sharp and bright kids that could have gone anywhere. And they were intentional about coming back. And part of that was because their hearts were captured in terms of the community and wanting to see some neat things happen. In fact, if you go up there, you'll see they're actually, those four entrepreneurs are opening up a candy store right now in Two Harbors. But it's not just candy, it's candy manufacturing, it's model railroad, um, it's unbelievable. And they're just jumping in and they're doing it. 17,000 square feet. It's a, it's a multi-million dollar project. So, yeah. So, um, the way our Gen Z students consume information is different than the way us 20, 30 year olds do. <laughs> um, so, right? <laughs> what are, so, and this could really be for any of the entrepreneurs out there, what are two or three things our kids can do while they're still in high school or even in college, skills or strengths, that they really can work on now that will sort of propel them into potential entrepreneurship? Yeah. You can think about it for a minute. So many kids with the social media influencers and things, they really want to be entrepreneurs. They really have some great ideas. What can they do now or in the near future to kind of prepare? I mean, if I can take a shot at what I've seen, um, and it's, it's difficult, but if you can get them in a situation where they feel like they're really leading, where they're really actually doing something that's significant and impactful, a lot of the students, if you talk to them, want to do social good. That is a great way to capture their heart. That's what we've done. And we actually did it through a program called DECA. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. but So we go into the schools and talk a lot with these students about, hey, this is a big deal. So yeah, are we out of time? Oh, OK. OK. <laughs> Listen, did you have a question? I was just curious about, you talked about changing the culture in Two Harbors. Mm -hmm. And how did you go about initiating that change and culture and sharing that vision? How did you gain buy-in? to support that? That's, that's awesome. Um, great question. Um, so started talking about it a lot. Um, don't have full buy-in with some people still. Um, I know because on social media when we make posts we hear about it. Um, <laughs> but really just you have to just start. You have to have the vision, right, and talk about it, which for us our vision is really our comp plan, comprehensive plan, for everybody that's aware. Cities mostly have comprehensive plans. And it says in there what our, the city's purpose is and then what, what we want to see the city be in 10 years. And so that's our vision. Um, and so then just talking about it, talking about it with staff. Um, you'd be amazed, even in businesses, and maybe some of you are, are in the same boat, you know, what's your purpose of your organization? Well, if you don't know what that is, go, get, go figure it out, right? What's the vision? Well, if you know what that is, go figure it out. It's really important. But you'd be amazed how many people who are in leadership positions can't speak to what the vision is, you know, so. And just so you know, we have a vision that two hours is going to be known in Minnesota as being a city of excellence. Go ahead. So the city of two harbors is, you've got challenges, you've got almost two downtowns. You've got the, the main drag going 61, then you take a right, you go into the whole downtown. And yet if you keep going further, you've got the beautiful pier out there that is a, a great draw for the city of two harbors. When we were there, like what a gold mine this could be near the railroad mm -hmm. museum or whatever it is. Is there any thing in the talks of you know blowing that up so that people would come to Two Harbors to see that beautiful lake and you could buy ice cream or whatever? Yeah, it was a, a well planned and well thought out strategy. In fact, it's working. It's called Castle Danger Brewery. <laughs> Castle Danger Brewery has done more for Two Harbors, and again, another entrepreneurial and innovative company, right? Started up in Castle Danger, moved to Two Harbors, and now all these people go down into our actual downtown and go, I didn't know this existed. This is unbelievable. And they watch these thousand foot boats get loaded nonstop. By the way, Two Harbors uh, ships out about 20 million tons of ore. Duluth and all their cargo ships only about 30 million tons. So that tells you how active Two Harbors is. And then you got that big you know, break wall you can walk out on and you feel like you're just sitting out in the middle of Lake Superior. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if you haven't tried it out, come on up. You seem like a Two Harbors like, advocate. I don't know. Buy that manna. 
<laughs> buy that man a cup of coffee or a beer. So next time you're up, look me up. So. Time All right. One more question. Anyone? All right. Anyone? Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've been so gracious.